Hi guys, Martin here and welcome to a new painting. When you're probably thinking, well, that's not a blank canvas. That looks like it's a painting already. Well, it does look like a painting, but it's not. It's a canvas print that I ordered for the um, gateway to the Cotswold painting. It was a commission piece last year. And uh, this was taken from a photograph um, that I took of that, my master photograph, that the print files I've had off it have been really nice on, on, um, on reproduction gicle prints. But I wanted to try a canvas print. This is on a one and a half inch deep wooden frame. Cost me $76. They were, it was on offer, so I tried it out. I can see why it's on offer now. Although when I look at the uh, screen, the camera screen, it looks like a beautiful painting. So I'm a little confused, but it's a small screen, so I can't really tell. But the actual print is really dark compared to the original. And it's really, really blotchy. It's a mess. And the definition of the detail is really poor, washed out. Like it's merging into each other. So there's no defined detail, sharp detail. It's dingy and dark looking and very patchy. There's just patches, especially in the sky, where you can have a dark blue, a medium blue, a light blue, all in the same area, instead of it being a smooth transition. It's just really messy. And then around this area on the top of the tree, it's like this glowing bright emerald green it's really bright emerald green, it looks a mess. So I got my money back, I complained to the printing company and they were good, they gave me a refund because I did a photograph of this next to the photograph of the original and uh, she said, how does that look like the photograph that I sent you? Looks nothing like it. So anyway, enough waffling, enough complaining that's all in the past now so what I can do instead of wasting this I can do what's called known in the art industry as an embellished print and an embellished print is you get a canvas print and you just dress it up make it look a lot prettier a lot nicer than it is, actually is so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to embellish it I'm going to put a whole coat of paint it's all going to be recoated because another thing and I'm going to take some shots of this at an angle because I requested it be laminated. The lamination protects it, helps it last for a long time. But on canvases, one of the reasons I put three coats of gesso down and smooth it down to get a nice smooth surface. But on canvas, it's a rough texture. So what's happened when they've laminated it the lamination process it's only hit the eye spots of the um, canvas so when you look at an angle it's got like all the eye spots are shiny and then the low spots of the canvas where the laminate didn't touch are dull so it looks like a shiny speckled canvas at an angle it's really disturbing to look at so well, lesson learned, I won't be ordering a canvas print from people like that again. But anyway, so I'm going to paint over the whole, every square inch of this and try to make it look as much like the original painting as possible. And at the end of the day, it's going to be a real painting because imagine that's not there. It is a canvas and I'm going to paint over that and I'm going to do maybe two layers. I'll do the blocking in layer and then I'll do a detail layer. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of time spent on it, turning it into a real painting instead of a print. Well, one thing that you might not know is some people will get a photograph on a canvas print. They'll have a beautiful photograph that they've taken somewhere and they'll get it printed onto a canvas and then they'll paint over that photograph. So it's not really a painting, it's a photograph that's been made to look like a painting. 
So a printed photograph painted over to look like a painting. Just like you can do with the um, software you get on your phones. You can turn your p photograph, your portrait photo or whatever and with a few clicks you have a portrait or a photograph of a landscape that's made to look like a painting. Same, same principle. All right, that's my introduction to what I'm about to do and I'm going to start getting on with it. So I've got some colours ready. I've got liquid impasto, titanium white, cerulean blue, phalo blue and some cobalt blue which has a lavender sort of colour in it. So I'm going to concentrate on the sky first, work my way down from top to bottom. So I'm going to start mixing some colours I'll, uh, and I'll see you in a minute. Alright guys, so I've mixed a colour blue, starting with the dark. I'm going to start in this top left corner, I've zoomed in with the camera so you can see. I'm applying the paint. And it doesn't matter if I go over the clouds that are existing in this print because I'm going to repaint them. But I'll just paint around them as carefully as possible and then and it doesn't have to be the exact shape the, when I paint the new clouds. All I want to do is cover all this crap looking print with some nice paint that's going to be richer, more even and a lot better the looking than it is presently. And I'm mixing this with the um, impasto so it should dry within 24-48 hours and then uh, I'll be able to go over it again with some um, glazes to get the right tones that I want. If I'm not happy with the tones, these turn out looking like. Alright, so I'm going to put you on time lapse speed now and I'll see you soon. Just Stick around if you want to watch this colour get out. Okay guys, so now I've covered the sky with some paint. I haven't touched the clouds yet, but now I've put a layer of paint, different tones on there. I'm just going to blend those tones together now. I'm going to use my number 10 soft brush. And I'm just going to use circular motions just to blend these colours. And I'm not bothered about going over the clouds because I have to paint, repaint those in with white paint. All 
right guys I don't know how that's looking on the camera but with the naked eye that looks really nice and it didn't take long to do that but there will be some glazing when this is dry I'll go over it again with glazes to get that sort of soft very scattered faint cloud effect in the sky I've got some of it now around here I've got that nice you can see the direction that the clouds are moving by doing those very thin stratospheric clouds in the distance all right guys so I think that's good for the first layer on the sky now I'm going to do some cloud work so yeah I'm going to start blocking in the clouds now it doesn't matter if it mixes with the blue while the blue is wet it will mix so you'll get pale blue at the edges once it's all dry then I can touch it all up and uh, you know, make the clouds look like they're prominent against the background sky so I'm going to use a number three round brush for this However, you can see that number three, just to do cloud. I'm basically just going to scrub the clouds in to get, get the first layer down. And I'm going for the dominant colour, which is white all the shading of the clouds the little bit of golden pinky glows and the grey tones in the shadows of the clouds I'll um, add later at the next stage but for now I just want to concentrate on getting something down to indicate where the clouds are going to be so that's the cloud work blocked in remember this isn't finishing this is just blocking oil paint all over this printed canvas to cover it in a layer of oil paint because that's what we want it to become an oil painting not a print and uh, so the sky and the clouds are now blocked in so I'm now going to work in this mid mid area these trees those hills and then when I've done that area I'll drop down to the foreground 
I'm going to stop the camera, I'm going to slide the camera down and focus on the mid-ground and then you can watch me start blocking that in. So I'll see you in a minute. I think that's good for the trees. We've put three different tones down and again at the next stage we'll do the detail work. I've got a block in the branches as well yet. Yeah. While I'm using these different tones of green I'm just going to block in these trees and hedgerows in the background. So block in those hedgerows and trees in the background and work on the branches 
and the trunks of the trees which disappeared on the print. You can't see the trunks. They just got everything just blended together. It looked black everywhere. Black dog, brownie black. Now I've done the trees, the sky and the hills and the clouds I'm going to work on the field now, blocking in the field, all the grassy area. Then the uh, bushes at the side and the walls, gate posts, work my way across to try and get this all blocked in, wrapped up so we can let it dry and get on with stage two, blocking in detail. Alright, let me try this one. Yep, that's better. That looks more like the painting. So, I mean the uh, photo. So I'm just gonna blot this in all over. And then I'll have to put all that detail back in at the detailing stage. All the different shades of grass, shadowy highlights and change brushes now I've blocked in the broad areas and gone to a small round I'm going to just block in between these bushes where you can see through them I'm not concerned about going over the leaves because the leaves are the details I'll put in secondary on top of this so anything that gets lost while I do this will be, will be um, replaced when I block in the detail. was a horrible dark orangey brown looking field on the print it's now blocked in looking the rich golden yellow straw colour it should be when compared to the photograph okay now I'm gonna 
blocking the mid-tone green in this area of the grass. Okay, now these stone walls on here look a dingy brown colour again. Brown and orange seem to have been the overbearing tones of this print, so they obviously saturated their red content in this print. These are more of a grey, greyish beige Cotswold stone colour. This is the Cotswolds we're painting, so we need the stone colour to match what you get in the Cotswolds. So I'm going to mix some um, shades of greyish brown and uh, start blocking in the stones. All right, let me just see what this colour looks like. I'm just going to block everything in and all the highlights and low lights I'll have to put in at the detail stage. blocked in and that's as far as I can go now I gotta let that dry before I can start blocking in the second layer and the detail and making things start to come to life so let's take the camera away so guys I've took the camera off the tripod and this is level one now finished we're gonna let this dry and then I can start blocking in the second level, blocking in detail in the sky and clouds, uh, blocking all the bush, foreground bush detail, grass detail, and the gate, and, uh, and start building up some of the detailed tones on the hills and everywhere else. So that's it for now. Level one, I'm saying, is good. We're done. So that horrible looking, dingy looking print is now coming to life. Now it's had a full coat of paint over it. Um, so the print now becomes a proper painting. So if you followed it this far so far, level one guys, much appreciated. Really uh, um, appreciate your uh, efforts to watch and comment and like. And uh, I'll see you at stage two, blocking in detail. Until then, I'm going to get back to the...
to the honeymoon tree. That's level one there, but all blocked in. But now that's dry. Since I've been working on this one, I can start stage two on that one now. While this one dries. See you at stage two. Cheers for now.